Hi there, my name is Chad, and this is your Moho tutorial for the week. This week, we're going to focus on using target bones when rigging a character. Once again, I'm going to continue building up the Moho tutorial library. So I know there's plenty of tutorials out there covering this, and perhaps even my own Smith Micro tutorial I did probably two or three years ago. However, I figured why not do it again? So let's get started and jump into Moho and start working with target bones. So here we are inside of Moho, and we have our character on screen rigged with bones. I'm on frame zero, and I'm just going to take the manipulate bone tool and come in. I'll grab a bone, let's say the hand bone, and just move this around so you can see how it currently works. Here, I can move these bones around. Everything is connected and looking good. I can bend the body, and I can move the feet as well. So we could come in here and do different things with the feet. There's no constraints, so you can see there's a little bit of wonkiness there, but everything for the most part is working okay. However, let's say I want to move the pelvis down to create the effect that he's sitting or perhaps bending down. So if I were to just back up, reset the workspace on frame zero, and then try this again, you can see when I do this, all I'm actually doing is just moving the entire rig whenever I try to move the character to bend down. And so what I want to do is create target bones so that I can anchor the feet in. And that's basically what target bones do. They basically allow you to control a series of bones using squash and stretch properties, if you wish, and they allow you to anchor in certain parts of the rig. So to show you how this works, we first need to have the bone layer selected. So let me just hide everything except for the bone layer. And I also want to make sure that no bones are selected before I do anything else. So when everything is blue, there's no red bones, meaning nothing selected. I want to use the add bone tool. So I'll use A on the keyboard to select that. And we're just going to come down now to the feet. We'll start there. And I'm just going to click once near the heel and drag to release. And I want to do the same thing now for the second foot, but I want to deselect this bone before I attempt this. So we'll deselect that bone, grab the add bone tool, come in here and create a second bone. Now using B on the keyboard for my select bone tool, I'll click once on the first bone I made, come up here to the bone name section, and we'll name this t.f.foot. So target front foot, and then hit enter. And we'll do something similar for the second bone, t.b.foot, and enter. So these are going to be the target bones, and you can name them anything you wish, just as long as you recognize the name when it comes time to link the target to the bone. So now, in order to tell Moho where the target is, we need to select the appropriate bone. You don't want to select the foot for this. What you want to do is select the leg bone in this case that is attached then to that target and the foot. And then we're going to go over to bone constraints, come down to target, and then choose t.f.foot from the list. When we do this, you'll see a target icon appears between the bones, indicating that there is now a target. So in this case, t.b.foot, and you can see now we have a second target. We'll close this panel, zoom out just a little bit so we can get a better picture of the character. Now, taking the manipulate bones tool once again, I want to come in and move some things around now. So let's try the pelvis thing. If I click and drag on the pelvis, you can see now we get a different effect. The body is moving down, but the legs, or at least the heels, are remaining stationary. And that is what we want in this case. But there is one tweak we need to make. What I'm going to do is select the feet. So if I come in, select these feet, just hold in shift and click to select both, 
I can come up to bone constraints and then choose independent angle and then close that. So now when I bend the body, you can see that the feet stay on the ground so that we get a more grounded look with the animation. And I can combine this by having him bend over and do different things and whatever I need him to do. So with that said, you can apply targets basically to anything. So we could apply a target to a hand. All I would have to do is just come in, make sure nothing is selected, add the bone, just like that to the wrist. We can name this one really quick to target.front hand, and then come up to the arm bone, go down to your target, and you can assign the target. Come back out, click and drag on that target, and we can move it out. Now, just a couple more things. You can add squash and stretch to these limbs. So if I were to use the select bone tool, let's just come in and lasso both arm bones. Come up to bone constraints. You can see squash and stretch scaling is enabled. I'm just going to come down to maximum IK stretching and change this to two, and then close. Now, if I were to use the manipulate bone tool on that target, you can see when it gets past a certain point, it starts to stretch out. And this can create all sorts of different cool looking cartoony effects. And you can adjust just how far each bone stretches. So if you want one to stretch more than the other, you can select them individually and do just that. And it goes beyond just the arm as well. If I clicked on the shoulder, come over to bone constraints, I could turn squash and stretch scaling on. And let's just put these both to two and close. And once again, I can click and drag. And then as you can see, it's now transforming the shoulder as well. And we could of course do additional squash and stretch scaling to all of this if we wish to create some interesting looking results. And just one more thing. Let's say we are animating out a scene. Let's just go to frame 24. I'm just going to bring this out and Let's say we bring this down. We're just gonna do some different things here really quick. Bring it up like that. I'm not sure why I would animate the character doing this, but let's just say we are. And at this point, let's say just a few frames past this, I realize I no longer want the arm to be targeted. I want that target bone to no longer have influence over the arm. What I could do is select the select bone tool, click on that arm bone, come up to bone constraints, go to target, and then choose none from the list. You'll notice on the timeline, we get a new channel, and this is the target channel, and you can see a keyframe has been added. But not only that, the arm is no longer stretched out, and it's no longer influenced by that target bone. So we go from it being stretched out to not. So that gives us the ability to turn it on or off at any time, and of course we could come back, let's say later on, two seconds into the animation, and you could turn it back on. And you can see now it goes from off to on, just like that. So that's a little bit about target bones inside of Moho. They can be very useful for grounding in animation. And also the squash and stretch scaling is really nice and adds a cartoony effect to the rig. Also, you can turn them off and on at any time. So if you have a target that you no longer need, just turn the target off. And that's all you need to do. The keyframe is added and you can move on with your animation. It can save a lot of time, especially since you don't have to swap a rig in and out, one without targets and one with targets, if you need to keep those targets swapping on and off. So with that said, I'm going to leave the video here. Please leave comments if you'd like to see more tutorials. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to see weekly tutorials and my monthly courses. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.